Here, we have a fairly standard question where we have two point charges and both of them contribute to the electric field at a certain point. From a previous course, you might have learned to do the magnitude and direction separately. So we can do the directions fairly simply right now. From this positive charge, let's call this Q1. And then this guy is going to give us a electric field always points away from your positive charge. Certain size, vector. This is from 1 to point P. And remember the notation here is the first subscript refers to the source of the field, in this case Q1, whereas the second subscript P is the point at which you have your effect. We have a similar notation for forces, but this is electric field. So source, then point of effect. And then let's call this negative charge Q2. It's going to supply a field that points towards it. And you know it's going to be substantially bigger than E1P because the charge is closer. In fact, because we know it's exactly half the distance, we know it's going to be exactly four times as much. Because the magnitude is, of course, given by kq over r square. Now, that would be an approach that we would have done it in a previous course, but here we actually want you to incorporate the unit vector. So instead of doing the magnitude and the direction, so instead of doing the magnitude and direction separately, we want to combine these and work out the direction and magnitude together using our unit vector notation. The unit vector notation allows us to incorporate the direction into the algebra itself so that we can deal with the cases where the location of the point or the source changes or is unknown. And we'll be using approaches like that very soon in our next chapter where we have a continuous distribution of charges instead of discrete points where we can exactly say where it is. And so I'm going to use this question to demonstrate how we'll use the unit vector notation to work out all the signs and directions without having to treat them separately. We'll clean up a few things. We'll keep the diagram as this because it's always good to get a sense of roughly how it looks like. Right, so starting from the top again, as I always suggest, start from the answer and see what you need. So in this case, we're trying to find the electric field at point P. So we want the total field at point P. And in this case, there's two sources that will give us that. One is the Q1, which is the positive, and the Q2, which is the negative in this case. So we have the electric field contribution from point 1 against the source to at point P, at the point of effect. And then you have the same for charge number 2. So in order to make use of our unit vector notation, we need to establish a consistent coordinate axis. So we'll call this the x direction. And we also need to set where is x equal to 0. So let's say x equal to 0 right here where charge 1 is. So that this here is x is equal to a. And this is x is equal to 2a. So we have all those coordinates so we can organize things a bit better. So the next step is to find each of these electric fields separately using the formula given here. Where you have 1, that's q1. And then you have R1P, which is the displacement vector from the source to the point. And this underneath is purely the distance square, giving you the magnitude. And then the direction is given by the unit vector up here. This here basically tells us our magnitude information. And this here is responsible for our direction. So our job then, first and foremost, is to find this displacement vector. Because if we don't find the displacement vector, we can't find the unit vector that points in that direction. The displacement vector is from the source to the point. And to calculate displacement vector, you always take the end position minus the start position, where position is the positional vector. So the end position is p minus 1. So it might be a little confusing that we these subscript order tends to be swapped around, but just remember like we've always done with displacement, it's always final minus original. And that's what we're going to stick with. Working that part out, the positional vector that defines where P is, is 2A 
in the positive i direction because x equals zero is here going pointing all the way to p you get to a i hat and in this case it's a 1d problem there's no j there's no k and then you have your r1 so charge one where is it located it's located right at x equals zero so you have zero uh, we'll put an i hat for good measure not necessary so then you know that is our displacement vector between one and p and then the magnitude of that vector because we're given this ijk form and you only have i so we just forget the i and pick off the magnitude simple simple the unit vector in this case is also quite simple because we only have one component so we know that it must point in the positive i direction so then we just sub everything in and everything should work out here we're not giving any specific numbers so we're just going to plug in the variable as given so q1 is positive q over in this case 2a all square and the unit vector is i hat so we'll keep this around while we move on to our other term which is 2p and again here the key to this whole thing is to finding the displacement vector from the source to the point because that will give us both the magnitude down here as well as the unit vector defining the direction so r 2p is equal to again it's final minus original so we take the positional vector of the point minus the position vector of q2 giving us 2a in the i hat direction minus a in the i hat direction because that's where charge 2 is at x equals a then we know that that's just that again being a simple 1d case we know that the magnitude is simply a and the unit vector is i hat so now we can sub things in so given that we follow the the convention where this unit vector here is from the source to the point you can see that it's giving us the correct direction of negative i hat for my e to p if you follow these convention the signs will work themselves out and that's why we work in our unit vector notation to have it included in our algebra then the last step is somewhat trivial we just put it all together we take this over here and we add this over here a bunch of stuff can factor out keeping the unit vector in the back as conventional and so we can pretty quickly get to the fact that it's going to be negative k q over a square times three quarters i at and so you can see once you get used to it maybe it's almost easier to keep track of the direction using the unit vector framework because it allows us to follow through the algebra without having necessarily to consider exactly where the, all the points is and that becomes immensely useful when the specific position of either the source or the point is unknown or changes so hopefully you can get used to this and then we'll apply this to a 2d problem fairly soon one last point this particular distribution of charges with a positive charge and a negative charge equal and opposite charges having a certain distance apart is quite special and quite common and we call them dipoles they actually play a very fundamental role in explaining a lot of different phenomena the most common of which is how a neutral object gets attracted to a charged object and we'll explore that a little bit in future questions.